Mark Gurman over at Bloomberg just posted a big article leaking a lot of what Apple might be up to in the smart home space and how they could be turning to that as their next big area of growth for the company. My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome back to my channel. I've been covering Apple and smart home tech here on YouTube since 2018. And I wanna go through this article and add some of my reactions and thoughts to what Mark's saying about what Apple's up to. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts over in the comments. I won't always respond, but I do read them. And while most of the article's really exciting, there's a troubling concept around some of the ideas being thrown around that I wanna get to in this video as well. And at the end, I wanna really get to the bottom of what I think is holding Apple back in smart home tech. So jumping into the article, engineers at Apple have been exploring a mobile robot that can follow users around their homes, said the people, who asked not to be identified because the Skunk Works project is private. The iPhone maker also has developed an advanced tabletop home device that uses robotics to move a display around. Now let's start with that tabletop device because I think that could be pretty interesting. We've already seen Amazon do this with their Echo Show line, and I think it would be great for video chatting. Apple has a center stage feature where you've probably seen on an iPad or studio display or other products, they have a wide angle lens and they'll crop into part of that wide angle lens to follow you around the room with this sort of slow pan. And you can see that being even better with a camera that could actually move, kind of like what Apple's done with their Dock Kit API and a recent accessory I played with, the Belkin Stand Pro, which then allows you to rotate an iPhone to track you with the iPhone camera. And you can even use that for FaceTime or other video chatting today, including with continuity camera, pairing it to something like Apple TV on the big screen, which is pretty cool, but not necessarily what that device is intended for. And Mark goes on to add some more details about this smart display. The tabletop robotics project first excited Apple's senior executives a few years ago, including hardware engineering chief John Turnus and members of the industrial design team. The idea was to have the display mimic the head movements, such as nodding, of a person on a FaceTime session. It would also have features to precisely lock onto a single person among a crowd during a video call. Then jumping back to earlier in the article, though the robotic smart display is much further along than the mobile bot, it has been added and removed from the company's product roadmap over the years, and then Mark adds some context. The primary obstacle has been disagreement among Apple executives over whether to move forward with the product at all, according to the people. Now, you might have heard rumors that the HomePods haven't sold as well as some Apple executives would have hoped. And if you think about the smart display market, Amazon and other competitors have a lot of really affordable options. So what is someone gonna get if they pay a premium for an Apple product similar to the HomePod. Because if you think about it with, let's say an iPhone or a Mac, yes, you might pay a little bit more money, but a lot of people seem to think it's a good trade-off to get a better product. And of course, us Apple super fans would love just having it integrated with all of our other Apple products and into the ecosystem, but that's not a giant audience. And if you've tried Apple smart home tech and Siri, you probably know that it's not always been very reliable and it can sometimes be tricky to get it to automate to do what you want it to do. So if someone spends a bunch of money on this Apple smart display that probably looks really nice and works well out of the box and has some cool bells and whistles with video conferencing, are they really gonna feel like it's worth the money when it can't control their smart lights or do a bunch of other stuff in their smart home. But there are some companies in the smart home space that are able to charge a premium for their products and bring with it a lot of features that it seems like people are willing to pay for, including myself. So we'll talk about that in a minute, how Apple could maybe do that same approach. But going back to that robot that follows you around, Apple, according to Mark, has a number of job listings for robotics positions to join this team. And he mentions a handful of use cases, but I don't really see a lot of them being very practical, like washing the dishes in a sink. Have you heard of a dishwasher? In my experience, using a robot in the home works really well for vacuuming and mopping the floors. Of course, that's probably the biggest category of it, and I talk about that here on my channel. And 
While Apple might in the future integrate with those via the new Matter standard, I think building a vacuum and supporting all the parts for that is probably not a business they want to build expertise in. On the other side, I see things maybe like Amazon's Astro being just a glorified camera that can move around your place and can look at things that would otherwise be hard for a mounted camera to check out. And that could maybe even be especially valuable in a business. But either way, still a lot of money to spend on a little mobile robot that just holds a camera. Now, like as Mark mentions the car project, this could just spin off some interesting tech and inventions that go into other Apple products. But I wouldn't be surprised if like Mark speculates, we don't actually see anything about this robot project for let's say 10 years at a minimum. Now, I just think though, this idea is a little bit troubling to hear about Apple throwing around in the smart home because it seems like a huge bet without a lot of clear payoff in terms of making things that are amazing, at least from what we can see outside the company. But Apple of course has the scale and the bank account to dream big like that. But speaking of dreaming big, how are they going to make a smart display worth the extra money? Well, the real problem that Apple needs to solve in the smart home right now is a boring word that I think they could make sexy, which is infrastructure. I mentioned earlier about premium smart home companies that make quality smart home tech that costs more, but people feel is worth the money. And a prime example of that is Lutron. Like Apple, they aren't always first to jump on every single new technology, but their smart dimmers and switches and shades use their own custom Lutron Clear Connect wireless frequency to talk to their own custom hubs and bridges. And then those are hardwired into your network. And their more consumer line of this, the Lutron Caseta line, is incredibly reliable for me, as well as pretty much anyone I talk to about it. And sure, $70 is a lot to pay for a dimmer or a light switch on your wall, but you get what you pay for. It's smart and it never breaks down. If Apple is gonna charge a premium above an Amazon Echo display, let's say, how are they gonna give you what you pay for? Well, what if it just works like your iPhone and your iPad and your Mac? Most of what makes Lutron so reliable is that they control and integrate so much of their hardware along with software. But meanwhile, the smart home industry as a whole is going through this very slow revolution, which Apple is actually already a part of and that's moving to the matter standard. And within that move, there's actually a little bit of a race going on. Well, you have all these new light bulbs and smart plugs and switches and sensors that all work with lots of smart home systems. Most consumers are probably going to pick one smart home platform to run their home. And that's where the real value and differentiation is and the real lock-in to get a customer to pay you more over time for reliable services. And some of these platforms pitch being, let's say a single box or voice assistant in your home. But the problem is that that often relies on lots of other products from other companies doing a good job as well, like your Wi-Fi and your other thread border routers. And Apple's already in this game. They have HomePods and Apple TVs that already work with Thread and serve as your Apple Home hubs and can control all of these Matter accessories. And Apple even added a Thread radio with iPhone 15 Pro, which I made a video about when it came out. And Apple's in a little bit of a unique position here because by having your iPhone location data and your Apple Watch and your focus modes, not to mention ultra wideband for precise location, they have a lot of data that could also be used for triggering automations. But Apple got out of the Wi-Fi game years ago. And I think if Apple could work with home ISPs like they do with cell carriers, they could offer whole home wireless Wi-Fi and thread that makes your smart home just work. Add to this a more powerful automation suite with let's say Apple's potential new AI technology, along with of course, Apple Home and Shortcuts, and you suddenly start to see an integration of hardware and software where Apple controls not only the brains of your smart home, but also the backbone that makes it so reliable. And without owning this infrastructure to move all the data around, it would be like shipping the software and hoping the hardware manufacturer gets the other stuff right. I mean, who does that? So then back to the smart display, 
paying a premium for one from Apple makes a lot more sense because you're buying into a system that removes the complicated sides of smart home tech and makes all your matter accessories just work reliably. And then all the nice integrations with the Apple ecosystem that that smart display will inevitably have just becomes the cherry on top of all of that and makes it so easy to set up and get going. Now, from a sales perspective, at least here in the US, it seems a lot of cell carriers are becoming home internet providers and home internet providers are trying to become cell carriers. And that's probably true elsewhere. And you could see how a whole home Wi-Fi product from Apple could be added as a nice upsell bundled with a new set of iPhones for the family. Not to mention the additional services you could sell like making iCloud private relay also be a whole home VPN and Apple could also grow their HomeKit Secure video subscription features by engineering their own Wi-Fi routers to handle persistent connection to these cameras to keep them online for local in-home video monitoring. And then you just add into that a security system experience and you start to have a pile of whole home subscription services that just make this a more juicy proposition for Apple. Now, lots of companies have tried to solve the smart home, but no one has made it as easy and as seamless as Apple has made the iPhone, iPad, Mac, and Apple TV. If they could bring their scale to bear on being the infrastructure and the brains of your smart home, you start to see how some great solutions mean that you just pay Apple some more money and these confusing integration problems suddenly just fade away. Or they could just make a robot that follows you around. And if you like this kind of business and strategy thinking around Apple and smart home tech, I usually talk about this more in my monthly email newsletter over on my website, which comes out on the last day of every month and focuses on how Apple and your smart home are going to change. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel for more on Apple and smart home tech. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.